Hi friends, welcome to Smart News Digital. Let's have a discussion for the date 7th of September 2018. Today in our discussion we are going to deal with four topics. Today's first topic is Supreme Court decriminalizes homosexuality. Yesterday Supreme Court had given a historical judgment, a landmark judgment which decriminalized section 377 of the Indian Penal Code. What is section 377 of the Indian Penal Code? It criminalizes homosexuals. Yesterday, Supreme Court asked this particular community to forgive history for their brutal suppression. Historically, this particular community have been suppressed, oppressed, excluded, marginalized. Just citing that their nature of sex is against the order of nature. A constitution bench unanimously held that criminalization of private consensual sexual conduct between adults of same sex under section 377 of the Indian Penal Code is clearly unconstitutional because when adults having consensus over their sexual orientation you cannot criminalize that particular act just citing that male must have sex only with women and women must have sex only with men this is something a uh, backward thinking in a liberal society the court however held that this section 377 of the IPC will apply to unnatural sexual acts like bestiality what is this bestiality means that having sex with animals sexual acts without consent continues to be crime under this section 377 of the IPC meaning that a male forcing a male to have sex a female forcing a female to have sex will come under rape so that particular action will not be protected by this judgment Supreme Court described that this 156 years old tyranny of section 377 as irrational indefensible and manifestly arbitrary Section 377 punished homosexuality with 10 years of imprisonment without logic. Despite India having a liberal constitution and it aims to protect the rights of all its citizens, this Macaulay's legacy continued for 68 years. This particular section discriminates against a minority solely for their sexual orientation, citing that their sexual orientation is against the order of nature. Who are we to decide about the sexual orientation of others? Article 14 of the Indian Constitution ensures the right to equality, but this section 377 violates the right of LGBTQ community to equal citizenship and equal protection of laws. The court held that bodily autonomy is individualistic and choice of partner is part of fundamental right to privacy. I have right over my body and I have every right to choose my partner. This was much needed self-correction of past judicial wrong committed on the LGBT community. We must know some history about this particular section and its evolution. In 2009 itself, Delhi High Court decriminalized this homosexuality, meaning that Delhi High Court scrapped 377 in 2009 itself. But what happened in 2013 is that in the Supreme Court, in Suresh Kaushal case, they upheld section 377 and they set aside the Delhi High Court 2009 judgment. But yesterday's judgment came as a relief to this particular community and this particular judgment self-corrected its own mistake. The CJI said that this LGBTQ community needs a rainbow of hope for the sake of humanity. They should be allowed to live with the dignity and without the pretense about their identity. Till now they were compelled to hide their identity because showing their identity results in exclusion, results in oppression and suppression. This particular yesterday's judgment is the beginning of journey towards greater dignity, equality and liberty. Yesterday, Justice Nariman embraced Yogyakarta principles. It recognizes freedom of sexual orientation and gender identity as part of human rights. When it comes to gender identity, every person has the right to identify his own gender. Justice Chandrachur said medical science should stop being a party to stigmatization of homosexuals by trying to cure something that is not even a disease. Homosexuals are not patients. They have their right over their sexual orientation. These medical sciences should not treat them as patients and try to cure them, according to this particular judgment. Medical professionals and counselors should change their attitude towards these homosexuals. Stigmatization seriously affects the members of LGBTQ community. Today's second topic is the right to love on section 377 verdict. This article is also going to have analysis on the section 377 verdict. The stirring message given by the Supreme Court in a landmark judgment on 377 is that social morality cannot win over constitutional morality. Society can have values, religion can have values, but constitutional morality has to prevail over everything. 
it is a reaffirmation of right to love the court upheld that homosexuals right to have intimate relations with the people of their own choice their inherent right to privacy dignity and freedom to live without fear they should not fear to live in the society just for being a gay just for being a lesbian we should allow them to live as they are the court ruled that there could be no discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity in the puttasami case or privacy case of last year supreme court ruled that sexual orientation is facet of privacy and constitutionally it is protected so when it is constitutionally protected and you cannot question the right of every individual to have their own sexual orientation just citing that it is against the order of nature in yesterday's judgment they talked about transformative constitutionalism it means that treating the constitution as dynamic document and progressively realizes various rights our rights are evolving from 1950s to 2018 so constitution cannot be stagnant it has to be dynamic to understand to give rights to citizens as in the evolved society here we must understand what is transformative constitutionalism it means that treating the constitution as dynamic document and progressively realizes various rights of citizens meaning that constitution is dynamic it is not stagnant it has to be evolved as the society evolves our rights are evolving from 1950s to 2018 our constitution should ensure the rights with changing times and we must understand doctrine of non retrogression which means that once a right is recognized it cannot be reversed in putasami case we understood the right to privacy is a part of fundamental right so it cannot be reversed once it is recognized it is recognized for all so yesterday's judgment furthered the frontiers of personal freedom and liberated the idea of individual rights from the pressure of public opinion Justice Indu Malhotra says history was an apology to the LGBTQ community for the delay in providing the redress. They have been fighting for their rights for long time, but it took long time to recognize their rights and redress their grievances. The dilution of Section 377 marks a welcome departure from centuries of heteronormative thinking. It means that thinking heterosexuals are normal and other sexuals are abnormal. This thought has to be departed so supreme court recognized their rights and invalidated section 377 this is a fine first step but the society's behavior towards this community has to change then only this particular judgment will come into force with real letter and spirit today's third topic is india signs landmark defense pact with us india and the united states sealed a landmark communications compatibility and security agreement it will lead to a new generation of bilateral military partnership already india and united states having a bilateral relationship with respect to military this particular defense pact will enhance it further both sides called pakistan to stop terrorist strikes on other countries and urged maritime freedom in indo pacific region in recent times not only india and us has been critical towards pakistan because pakistan has been exporting terror from the pakistan soil terrorists are emerging and spreading all over the world and causing huge damage to humanity so these both countries together give warning to pakistan and they welcome the signing of communications compatibility and security agreement because it is going to facilitate access to advanced defense systems from us with this comcasa india has concluded three of the four foundational agreements with the us india has been talking about four agreements with the us three has been signed third one is comcasa which has been signed yesterday india has already signed two of them which is gsomia in 2002 and lemova in 2016 this particular comcasa pact will allow us to transfer specialized equipment to india for encrypted communication for us origin platforms like c17 c130 and p8i aircraft these aircrafts having origin from the us when us and india having communication with respect to these aircraft they are encrypted so nobody can tap the communication this is a very good feature for security perspective this particular pact comes into force immediately and it is valid for 10 years data acquired through such systems cannot be disclosed or transferred to any person entity without the consent of india without having a discussion with india us will not transfer the technology transfer the data acquired from this particular pact to other nations 
both countries announced their readiness to have discussions to have negotiations on an industrial security annex that would allow Indian private sector to participate to collaborate with US defense industry. Whereas when it comes to GSOMIA, it allows sharing of classified information from the US government and American companies with the Indian government and defense public sector undertakings but not with Indian private sector. Today's fourth topic is ending TB. The entire world is struggling to eliminate, eradicate this TB. For the first time, there is a hope. On September 26, UN General Assembly will, for the first time, they will address TB in high-level meeting. They are likely to release a political declaration which is endorsed by all the member nations of UN General Assembly. Why this political declaration? It is to galvanize investment and action to meet the global target of eliminating TB worldwide by 2035. By 2035, the world wants to eliminate TB. To eliminate this fatal disease, we need fund. So this political declaration wants to galvanize, wants to collect fund from all over the world, especially from the developed countries, so that elimination of TB will become easier. What is elimination of TB? It means that reducing the number to one case per million people per year, meaning that one person can have TB per million people, not more than that. It will be very impossible without universal equitable access to affordable quality TB diagnostics and treatment for anyone who needs it. TB patients need affordable medicines. They need affordable treatment. Without ensuring affordable treatment and affordable medicines, we cannot eliminate TB. Access to diagnostics and drugs have been considerably diluted in the most recent draft of political declaration. What made us to say this political declaration is diluted? There are certain provisions that have been omitted from this political declaration which made us to say this particular political declaration is diluted, watered down. Earlier, countries may avail various flexibilities under TRIPS in order to deal with health issues. But this particular component has been omitted when it comes to this particular most recently drafted political declaration. And second one is that countries may invoke the Doha declaration to compulsorily license drugs for use in public health emergencies. This also has been omitted. What is this compulsorily license? Compulsorily license means it enables competent government authority to license the use of patented invention to a third party or government agency without the consent of patent holder. When a country experiences health emergency, grave health issues, it can issue compulsory licensing in order to deal with that issue. This particular provision has been omitted in the recently drafted political declaration. The third one is the option to delinking the price of new TB drugs from the cost incurred in their research and development. This has also been omitted, meaning that if a research and development cost is higher, then the cost of that particular drug will also be higher. There was a provision to delink this price in order to make those drugs affordable. But when it comes to this political declaration, they delinked. The most recently drafted version watered down the original version which actively committed to uphold access to affordable generics for all. The declaration says is that the TRIPS agreement does not and should not prevent members from taking measures to protect public health. Member countries must give importance to the health of its own citizens. In order to protect trade-related intellectual property rights, no country can afford to compromise the health of its own citizens. India has fought to retain its status as a maker and distributor of generic medicines which are cheaper in nature, thereby protecting the right of health of people in developing countries. India is known for its pharma sector and India is producing cheap medicines in order to deal with many health issues. So India has been seen as a savior with respect to health sector when it comes to providing cheap medicines to developing countries. Indian patent law contains important provisions that help protect promote public health goals. Big pharmaceutical companies try their level best in order to have evergreen patents for their old drugs. But Indian government through compulsorily licensing overcoming this particular issue and ensures that there is affordable medicines are available to its own citizens. Big pharmaceutical companies follow unfair patenting practices which is facing opposition from government so that government can deal with these big pharma companies in order to ensure the rights of its own citizens.
TB by and large is easily diagnosable and curable, but still it remains to be a leading cause of death. Each day thousands of people with TB die, often because of inequitable access to quality diagnosis and treatment. People having TB belong to two different categories. Poor people who are affected by TB are not getting quality diagnosis and treatment so that they are dying which can be prevented by the government if they take necessary measures. The rapid emergence of drug resistant forms of TB is one of the biggest challenge. We need new and comprehensive diagnostic tests and second line TB drugs and health system to manage drug resistant forms of TB. Why second line TB drugs? Because first line TB drugs are resisted by bacteria. India not only accounts for fifth of world TB burden, it also has the largest number of people living with multi-drug resistant TB. India's target is to eliminate TB by 2025 itself. World wants to eliminate by 2035. India wants to eliminate this far ahead. These targets cannot be achieved without the support of government in order to access affordable quality diagnostic drugs. Since India is doing well in pharma sector, it has to assume leadership role to restore every possible option to protect universal access to TB drugs in the political declaration of 2018. Otherwise, it will also become just another brick in the wall. Thank you.